Yeah, 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 yeah. Part four, man. Talking about the wall. Talking about the wall around the mind, man. Uh, now, this had to do with the knowledge of truth and deception. See, a wall, it keeps stuff in and it keeps stuff out. You know what I mean? So the wall around your mind is what have everything to do with what you're going to receive into your mind. You know what I mean? What are you letting in through your ears, through your eyes? What are you letting in? What are you entertaining yourself with? What are you receiving? Are you receiving truth or are you deceiving lies? Compare it with the word of God. What the word of God got to say about it. What direction is it going to take you in if you let it lead you? You know what I mean? Is it truth? Is it deception? You know what I'm saying? So the wall is a mind. Matter of fact, I said we, we compare it to a vineyard. If you look at all the... um the stories or the, the metaphors about the vineyard, there was always a tower. In the vineyard, there was always a tower. Then you look at 2 Corinthians 10, 5, or you look at 2 Corinthians 10, it lets you know it's dealing with the mind. But you also dealing with high things, casting down uh, every imagination. That's in the mind. Uh, he said, every casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, that's dealing with the mind, knowledge. But you dealing with strong, he said, casting down imagination, pulling down strongholds. A stronghold is like a strong tower, a fortress, a place of protection, just like the vineyard had a tower. But if that tower is exalting itself against the knowledge of God, it got to come down. That can be a stronghold. You know, what I mean, it's another scripture where he said, uh, it said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Uh, then it's another one. He said the wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. That's a stronghold. You know, what I mean, but uh. But anyway, though, it basically had to do with the knowledge of truth and deception. What are you letting in to your mind? What are you receiving? What are you standing on? What are you trusting in? Are you receiving lies? Are you are you are you cool in your ignorance? They say ignorance is bliss. Some people don't want the truth. Some people just want to leave everything the way it is. You know what I'm saying? They don't want the truth. Just, just leave everything as is. I'm good in my ignorance. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't going to end well because you got to have a love for the truth. You got to have a love for the truth or you're going to be overtaken in the deception, the strong delusion. But uh, I'm going to read four and five. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought that's the mind to the obedience of Christ. Yeah, yeah, pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So that's that's mental. That's in the mind. The mind is like a battlefield. You know what I'm saying? The mind is a war zone. You know, the enemy want to establish strongholds in your mind. You know what I mean? But it's up to you to keep the enemy out. It said doctrines of devils, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You know, the enemy wanted his powers in his deception. His powers in his deception. That's why Jesus said, I'm the way to truth and the life. You know what I mean? He said, thy word is truth. Sanctify them in thy truth. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, you got to have a love for the truth. You know what I mean? So you that, that's what you got to bring in your city. That's what you got to bring behind your walls is get the truth in your walls and get the lies out your walls, get the lies out your mind, and get the truth in your mind. That's why the Bible say we got to renew our mind. We steady putting the truth in and taking the lies out. We steady putting the truth in and kicking the lies out, putting the truth in and removing the lies. Yeah, yeah, your mind is a city, and it has a wall, or you could say it's a vineyard, and it has a wall. 
Yeah. Matter of fact, the word can be compared to water. If your mind is a vineyard, you want to water it. You want to bring the light. Light represents wisdom. Light represents truth. For plants to grow, they need water. They need light. The water is the word. The light is the wisdom and the truth of God. Stop playing. Yeah. In your city, within your walls. Yeah. And you want peace within your walls. <laughs> Psalm 122, man. Yeah, said, let there be peace within her walls, prosperity within her borders, within her palaces. Yeah, you want peace in them walls. Yeah, who, he who keep his mind stayed on the Lord. Yeah, he shall keep in perfect peace cause, for he trusteth in him. Stop playing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowledge of truth and deception, though. Then I put Ephesians 4, 23 and 24, man. Renewing, renewing the mind, be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. In Titus 3, 5, it said the washing of regeneration, that's getting born again. Then it said by renewing of the Holy Ghost, renewing the mind. Ephesians 4, uh, Ephesians 4, 23 and 24, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take getting rid of the lies and bringing in the truth. That's a mental battle. What you going to let within your walls and you know what the holes in the wall are, your eyes and your ears. So, it, yeah, 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 yeah. When it comes to that, yeah, you, you got two gaps in the wall, but it's up to you. If you're going to bring in truth into the city, if you're going to bring truth through the walls or you're going to bring lies through the walls. If you're going to bring in the truth, huh? Or you're going to kick out the lies, or you're going to bring in the lies and mix it with truth or kick out the truth. It's up to you what you want to fill your city with, what you want to bring through them walls. You need to bring in all the truth, huh? You need to bring in all the truth that you can because you don't want to be deceived. He said, if it were possible, even the very elect, stop playing. You got to have a love for the truth. Fill your city, fill your vineyard with the truth of God and his word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your mind, the walls of the mind. And then the last thing is attitude. The last thing is attitude. I'm talking about your state of mind, though. Uh, your attitude, your state of mind. Christ-like character, that's love, love for God, love for people, that's holiness, to obey God, to live the life he called you to live, that's going to bring him glory, but you also got to have a warfare state of mind. You got to have Christ-like character. You have to set your mind to walk in and demonstrate the character of Christ. Then you got to have a warfare state of mind. We in a war. It's not a game. The devil really after your head. He really after your soul. Uh, I got first Peter one 13. Uh, he said, gird up. He said, be ye sober. Then he said, gird up the loins of your mind. You know what I mean? To gird up is like to put on a belt. You know what I mean? So you, it's, you know what I mean? Strap your helmet on, gird up the loins of your mind. If your mind was your waist, you put that belt around it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tighten up. Yeah. Gird up the loins of your mind. Second Timothy two, three and four, man. He talk about endure hardness as a good soldier. It said he that's enlisted into this war. He that's enlisted into the army. He who finna go to war. You know, what I mean, he not focused on the earthly things. He not focused on trivial things. He focused on pleasing the one who called him to be in this war. He focused on pleasing the one who enlisted him into this army, into this military. Huh? You got to be focused on the things of God, not just the things of man. Yeah, he say, he say they mind earthly things. He said, he said, ye mind the things of man, not the things of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you got to have your mind on God. You got to have your mind on the kingdom. And you got to know it's real life, live action warfare. And don't be so caught up in the earthly things. Huh? that God can't use you, that, that, that you spiritually blinded, huh? 
You, you got to be spiritually minded. He said, set your affection on things above, heavenly things, spiritual things. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure going to be. Yeah, don't be so caught up in the earthly things that 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 you have no spiritual, no spiritual senses, no spiritual sight, no spiritual understanding, caught up in the things of this life. That's how the devil wants you to be. Yeah, blind to the things of the spirit, blindness, hardness of heart, not sensitive to the spiritual things, to the heavenly things, to the things of the kingdom. Yeah, man. So. And then the last mental, mental thing, mental state of mind, Christ-like character, love, holiness, a warfare state of mind. Know how real it is out here. You got a real live enemy trying to take you out. And, and not just that, we trying to take him out. So it's offense and defense. It ain't just me watching out for the devil. Huh? Your enemy walk about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It ain't just me watching out for the devil, but I'm putting that work in on him too. Yeah, I'm putting that work in on him. Yeah, my spiritual disciplines, offense, prayer, the word, fasting, doing ministry, trying to bash his head in. What you talking about? We ain't waiting till he already been judged. Huh? We just enforcing the victory trying to take whoever along with us that we can, just like he trying to take whoever along with him that he can. But you ain't got to give the devil no direct worship to go to hell to end up with him, though. You don't have to give the devil no direct worship, no direct honor. Just don't be totally committed to God and you'll end up with the devil. Yeah, it's tight, but it's right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but that's the state of mind, man. Spreading the gospel. Ephesians 6 15 talk about uh having your feet shot with the gospelation of peace, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. First Peter 3 15 said, uh, you gotta be ready at any time to give an answer, give a response, give a reason of the faith that's in you with meekness and fear, with gentleness and respectfulness. You know what I mean? You got to be ready to spread the gospel at any time. You ought to be. Freely you've received, freely give. You know what I mean? We ought to be trying to take people with us, man. And I know how a lot of people ain't really trying to hear it, but push your line anyway. You know what I mean? If you get rejected, hey, somebody else going to receive it, though. Somebody else is going to be a word in due season for somebody. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He give me the tongue of the learned that I can speak a word in season to him that is weary. Yeah, somebody might reject it, but somebody going to receive it. Don't just be so easily discouraged. We need Holy Ghost boldness. Yeah, shout out to, uh, shout out to Eric and, and everybody at the, uh, at that Bible study group. You know what I'm saying? I, I got my, you know, that, that, when I recommitted to God, I really now witnessing used to be a lifestyle for me. I used to go out witnessing. I could be with a group. I'd be by myself. I go out witnessing. And then I don't have to go out witnessing. I could just be doing something at the gas station, at the grocery store. I might go to witnessing. It became a lifestyle, but I got away from that. But they, uh, you know, shout out to the crew, man. Uh, yeah, they, 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 they helped me to get back in motion. They helped me to get back on my witnessing, on my street evangelism. You know what I mean? Because that's needed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he sent them everywhere teaching. Said, teach the, uh, teach the word. Make disciples of all nations. Teach them what I've taught you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Great Commission. Yeah, you ain't got to be behind no pulpit. Use everything that you got. If you preaching behind the pulpit, if you preaching on the internet and in person, huh? Every exhaust, every avenue. Why not? Yeah, the devil going to exhaust every avenue he got to pull you down. Yeah, why not exhaust every avenue to do the work of the kingdom, man? Stop playing. But uh, yeah, man, that, that's the state of mind that you need to have within your walls. Within, within these walls of your mind, you need to have an attitude of, Christ-like character, the salt of the earth, which is love, which is holiness, love for God, love for people, man. Yeah, holiness, holiness of heart, holiness of conduct. And then you need to have a warfare state of mind. He said, be sober. This, this ain't nothing to play with. 
This ain't no time to be caught off your game, off your guard, with your guard down, caught with your pants down, caught with your guard down, thinking it's a game, caught off your P's and Q's, not on your note like you need to be. Yeah, it's real serious. It's serious. Yeah, yeah, he said, teach the young men to be sober-minded because they, they might think it's a game. They joking and playing and thinking it's a game. Nah, this is serious business. Yeah, so you got to have a warfare state of mind. And then last, you got to have a state of mind to spread the gospel, man. Yeah, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, ready to tell somebody about Jesus. Ready to spread this gospel, preach this gospel, teach this gospel, teach this word of God. Tell your testimony to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that. You know what I mean? The walls of the mind. Go over it one more time, man. The mind wall, the mental wall. It had to do with self-control. It had to do with the knowledge of truth and deception. And it had to do with your attitude. And then the last thing, I think I'm going to finish the video with this, is the walls around the kingdom of God. In the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, before the work of the cross was completed, they had Abraham's bosom. Okay, so that's where the righteous went. The people that lived holy, lived obedient, lived honorable lives. You see that in uh, Ezekiel 3. Ezekiel 18, Ezekiel 33, it talk about the righteous man. David talk about the righteous man, Psalm 15, Psalm 24. They wasn't perfect, you know what I mean? But Job was a, was a righteous man. People that was righteous under the old covenant. And, and now they, they righteousness was by faith, but it also demonstrated in their behavior because they still had to have faith for the one that was coming. All they knew was that a Messiah was going to come. They didn't know, they didn't get to see the Messiah, but they had faith in God. And God said uh, uh, that he was going to raise up somebody for them. What Moses said, and I think Deuteronomy 18, he said he's going to raise up another prophet like me. And him, you got to make sure you listen to him. You know what I mean? And all the prophets prophesied about Jesus in different ways. You know what I mean? Hosea said uh, on the third day. You know what I mean? Making reference to Jesus. Jonah was in the in the in the whale's mouth for three days and three nights. He was a sign, but that sign was pointing to Jesus. Uh I think Isaiah talked about the branch. I think Jeremiah talked about the branch. Um it's all type of different. David prophesied uh, you're not gonna leave my soul in hell. Uh, you're not going to suffer your Holy One to see corruption. So everybody prophesied about Jesus in different ways. So they knew that there was somebody coming. Now, they didn't know who it was. They just knew. And, and then Jesus said, hey, b before he said, uh, before Abraham was, I am. He said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. So all the prophets declared that there was a coming Messiah. So they had to have forward faith that there was a Messiah coming. They had to have faith in God and their lifestyle had to demonstrate their faith through righteous living. Don't mean they was perfect because they had sacrifices for sins and shortcomings. But anyway, so the righteous people, the righteous people that was in the old covenant, they ended up, when they died, they ended up in Abraham's bosom. This is Luke chapter 16. And then you, you, you had the realm of the dead, which is Sheol. But within the realm of the dead, you had Abraham's bosom. That's where the righteous people were. And then the unrighteous people were not in Abraham's bosom. I heard, uh, shout out to uh, Pastor Forrest Williams. Yeah, yeah, Pastor Forrest Williams. He he talked about the burning side, the paradise side and the burning side. <laughs> so, you know, you had the realm of the dead. You had Abraham's bosom, which was paradise where the righteous were. And then you had the rest of the realm of the dead, which was the punishment, the torment side. So now it had a wall, though. I'm talking about the walls of the kingdom of God, man. Uh, in Luke 16, you know, Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. He's in the paradise side. 
the the side where you uh what he say he's comforted now, and in the earth he was tormented now he comforted, and the rich man you was living good but now you tormented in the flames, so uh, and he was saying send Lazarus so he can dip his finger in some water he's still trying to call shots. He still want Lazarus to be in a subservient position, even in the afterlife. Yeah, send Lazarus in, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, that that's just how I see it. But uh, he said, ain't none of that, because it's a wall. There's a gulf, a chasm, huh, between us and you. So can't nobody come from over here, over there? Can't nobody come from over there, over here? It's a wall. Then you look at, you look at, uh, you look at heaven. John saw heaven. The, the new Jerusalem, the new earth, the new heaven, the, the holy city, new Jerusalem. It's got walls. Revelation chapter 21, Revelation 22, uh, specifically Revelation chapter 21, 12 through 21. Matter of fact, but check this out. It said the gates going to be open though, but he said, ain't nothing going to come in here that offend God. Revelation 21, 8, Revelation 21, 27, Revelation 22, 15 on the outside are dogs, sorcerers, murderers, huh? the sexually immoral. Uh, it even said the cowardly, unbelieving, fearful, abominable, all that stuff that offend God, whatever loveth and maketh a lie. Yeah, ain't no liar going to tarry in his sight. Stop playing, man. Yeah, all that. So uh, the gate's going to be open, but at the same time, ain't nothing coming in there that offends God. And I'm sure that once you're in there, you ain't going to want to go out. You might go out of the city, but you ain't want to go, ain't going to want to go out of his kingdom because it's, you know, it might be more to it than just the city. It's a new Jerusalem, but it's a new heaven and a new earth. So, you know, who knows? But that city got gates and it's got walls. And even though they open, God, God got it regulated. Where ain't nobody coming in there who ain't in the book of life. Talking about kingdom walls. And then I remember shout out to Pastor Herman Murray, one of his old sermons. I want to say like, I want to say like 2006 or something. But I remember he said, uh, if you look at heaven, heaven has set measurements, but hell just enlarges itself to be as big as it need to be. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? Heaven got set measurements. Heaven's got a set measurement. But hell don't have set measurements. It just enlarges itself. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 14. Say hell just keep getting bigger. Uh, uh, Habakkuk 2, 5 said the wicked man, talking about a wicked man, said he enlarges his desire as hell. Somebody who can't get enough. An uh, uh, unsatiable uh, uh, appetite that's impossible to, to satisfy. Hell just keep getting bigger, making more and more room for whoever want to go, whoever end up there. Hell just going to keep making more and more room. But heaven, it got set measurements. Ain't no expanding heaven. It's already set. <laughs> that's crazy. huh? Yeah, but walls, though. Hell ain't got no walls. Yeah, or the, the well, nah, hell yeah. He said the gates of hell, but the devil ain't picky. <laughs> He'll let you in that mug if you want to go. Yeah, yeah, hell, hell got gates too. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, but uh, the devil ain't picky. He'll let you up in there if you want to go. God's a little bit more exclusive, a little bit more selective. It's only one way. Yeah, that's the way of Jesus. And it ain't just Jesus. It's the way of holiness in Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can name the name of Christ. Huh? Yeah, but if, if you don't if you don't live that life, if you don't follow Christ like you're supposed to, you won't go there. You can have Christ in your mouth. You can have Jesus in your mouth, but that don't mean you're going to inherit his kingdom. Yeah, he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts, hey, are far from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their hearts be far from them, though. Yeah, in your name did we not. Yeah, I prophesied when I was backslid. 
But thank God I prophesied my way out of the situation I was in. I wasn't a bad person. I wasn't no bad person. I wasn't, nah, I wasn't doing nothing against nobody will. I wasn't manipulating nobody. You know what I mean? Everything was straight up with me. I wasn't, ain't wasn't no weird strings attached. Wasn't no lies and half truths. And I get you to get in the situation. And then I tell you the rest that I didn't tell you up front. And wasn't no, uh, what they say, read the fine print. Nah, it wasn't none of that. I wasn't no bad person, bro, but I was double minded. I wanted it was sin that I was in. My life wasn't consumed with sin, but I definitely, <laughs> you know, what I mean, I definitely committed my time to sin just just as well as I committed some time to God. Double minded. Can't serve two masters, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's gates. It's gates in the kingdom of heaven, man. But the gates is not what's uh it's gates and it's walls in the kingdom of God. But that's not what regulate who can come in and who come out, because the gate gonna stay open. Ain't even gonna need the sun. Ain't gonna need the moon. It's gonna be lit up all the time. Yeah, but it's Jesus and your relationship with him that that determine who coming up in that thing. It ain't the walls and the gates that determine who going up in that thing because the gate's going to be open. It's going to be your relationship with Jesus and the life that you lived as a representation of your faith that determine if you get up in there or not. You got to be in the book of life. You got to be on the guest, on the guest list. My God, you got to be on the guest list. <laughs> Jesus, man. That's it, man. Uh, and the last thing I just want to talk about the freedom, even though there's walls, even though there's gates, huh? Even Jesus said in John chapter 10, man, he said the porter, he, he talked about the sheep being in the sheepfold. Ain't they fenced off? And then there's a porter that open up the door. My sheep going to know me. My sheep going to hear my voice. Yeah. He said they going to come in and out. That don't mean in and out of righteousness, in and out of holiness, in and out of obedience. Nah, in and out of the presence of God from light to darkness, darkness back to light. Nah, that he said they're going to come in and out. That, that represent freedom, though. That just represent freedom because in Christ you are free. Continue in my word. Yeah, and the word going to make you free. Continue in my word and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Yeah, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, the freedom in Christ. But he said, only use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. The freedom that you have in Christ is for you to serve God and do the will of God and do the work of God, not for you to sin. But you can if you choose to. You can walk away from God right now if that's what you want to do. But see, it ain't that easy with the devil. See, when, when, when you get tied in with the devil, you got to be broke free. You got to have a yoke broken, a yoke destroyed. When you rocking with the devil, you got to be set free. You got to be broke free. Yeah, you got to be Holy Ghost bonded out. Yeah. Yeah, when you messing with the devil, you got to be set free. You got to be broke free, made free. You can't just walk away without resistance, without a struggle, without a fight. But with God, if you want to, you can just walk away. But see, your freedom is not for you to walk away, but you can. But your freedom is for you to serve God and do the will of God. With a light yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Yeah, yeah. You free. You not weighed down, tied down. You free to do the will of God. You free to do whatever God will have you to do. Yeah, only use not your freedom, your liberty, uh huh, as a as a as a cloak of maliciousness. Peter said we didn't use our liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. In the in the in the amplified, it said a license to sin. We didn't use our liberty as a cloak, 
to do whatever we want, lasciviousness, licentiousness, a license to sin. That ain't what our freedom is for. Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Bondage come from the other side. Bondage come from sin. Bondage come from the devil. With Christ, there's freedom. Freedom to do the will of God without a uh, uh, without a, a, a yoke of bondage, a tight, restrictive yoke, a heavy burden. Yeah, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Yeah, man. Uh, that's it, man. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the walls of the kingdom, man. Kingdom walls. You know what I mean? The life wall, it's the wall around your life, man. All your stuff. Yeah, that's the wall around your life. The mind wall, that's the wall around your mind. And then God's kingdom wall, that's the wall around the kingdom of God. Heaven. You know what I mean? The wall of being in Christ. He said, your life is here with God in Christ. Or did it say here with Christ in God? <laughs> Colossians chapter three, man. Uh, yeah, that's a wall. Yeah, the devil can't just get at you like he want to. Do whatever he want to do. Nah, we're in God. He is our wall. Yeah, the walls of the kingdom, man. Yeah, he said, ye are dead and your life is here with Christ in God. Yeah, but I'm talking about the mind wall. I'm talking about the wall around your life, the heads of protection, the wall around your life, the wall around your mind and the walls around the kingdom of God, man. Kingdom walls signing off, man. Jesus.